I'm an adventurer as well. So that means I like to go traveling. I like to go on adventures. I like to go to different countries in the world. And then when I come home, I come to this little room here where I write my books. And you guys have been reading this book. Is that correct? Yes. So this, this, I've written 12 books now, but this is my first book in Turkish. So I'm really glad to have one book in Turkish and I really hope you're enjoying it. So what, what I thought I would do today is talk to you for about 10 or 15 minutes about my adventure around the world. And during that time, I hope you can come up with some good questions that you want to ask me. And then we can do your questions and I can tell you some more stories like that. Does that sound okay, Bushra? I'm so sorry, but because uh, I'm late. It's okay. You're very naughty for being late, very <laughs> naughty. But that's okay, don't worry. Um, can, can you all understand the way I'm speaking? Go like, am I speaking okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. You're, yes. you're, you speak much better English than my Turkish, so well done. So, I, first of all, I wanted to be a teacher. So, I was training at college, at university, to become a teacher. So, I was, that was what I thought I would do for my job. I'd be a teacher in a school. But the problem is, being a teacher is really hard work. It's very, very hard work being a teacher. So you have to be very nice to your teachers. And I am a very lazy person. So I decided that being a teacher was too difficult and too much work. And because I'm lazy, I thought instead I would ride my bicycle right the way around the whole world because that seemed easier than being a teacher. Look at this. I've got a big globe. So I can use this to explain where I've been. It's quite heavy. So I decided to cycle around the world. So I got my bike and all the things that you need to cycle around the world. So you don't really need very much to go on a big adventure. That's what I really liked about it was that you don't need to be very rich. You don't need to be very strong. All you need is a bicycle, um, a tent to sleep in, um, a small little cooker to make some food, some things to repair your bike if it breaks down, and that's about it. So I climbed onto my bike outside my house in England. I waved goodbye to my mum, to my dad, um, and to my young brother, said goodbye, and I cycled away from home. When I first left home, I was very sad because I didn't know when I would see my family again. I didn't know when I would see my friends again. So I wasn't really excited. I was more just sad at the start of the adventure. But I soon um, started to cheer up and start to look forward to all the things I would see. So uh, I got very high technology. I printed a map of the world. So I'm going to draw on here as we go to explain bit by bit where I went. So I started in England and I cycled from England down to France all the way through Europe until eventually I reached Turkey. I, cr I crossed from Bulgaria into Turkey and for me this was a a big moment because it meant I'd crossed all the way across Europe from England right the way to Istanbul right across Europe so I was really excited to get to Turkey um, I'd never been there before um, I had to spend about two weeks in Istanbul trying to sort out visas for different countries because when you go to, from one country to the next you have to show the police your passport and they stamp in it the visa for you to go to different countries. So I was in Istanbul for about two weeks and I really, really loved it. Um, 
and actually I loved all of Turkey. Turkey, I'm saying this is this is true. I'm not just saying this to you, but Turkey was one of my ten favorite countries in the whole world. I really liked it. Um, it's a very beautiful country. Um, the history um, in Turkey is amazing. The people were really friendly and really kind, and they helped me a lot. And the best thing of, I think in Turkey is the food. You have very very delicious food in Turkey. I really liked it. Um, so every day I would cycle through small villages and in the early morning I'd stop in the village and they cook the really nice fresh bread. Uh, ekmek, is that right? I think. Uh, I'd, so I'd buy hot bread and I'd drink some cup of tea and have a nice chat with someone and cycle on. Um, and the food was really delicious. So I rode from Istanbul through um, Cappadocia, which is an amazing place to be, uh, onto Ankara, and from there I headed down through Turkey down in towards uh, Syria and Lebanon because I was trying to ride to Africa. So now I've gone. Where have I gone? Africa made it to Africa. So Egypt was the, the first place I got to in. Africa and of course that's famous for the amazing history, the big pyramids um, and the River Nile. The River Nile is the longest river in the whole world. I had to cycle the whole length of the River Nile from the start of it all the way down through Egypt, through Sudan into Ethiopia. I think Sudan was one of the hardest places I went to. It was a desert so trying to cycle a bike through a desert was almost impossible. It was really hard. Um, the weather was so hot. Coming In England, it's nearly always cold and raining. So I found a lot of the world very difficult from the heat. It was so hot. Uh, but I make, got down to here, making good progress. In uh, Kenya, I crossed the equator. You know the line that goes halfway through the world. Boom, boom, boom. So I'd now made it from the north to the south of the world. Um, and what's amazing about that is that the stars in the sky at night, the stars you see at home, so for you in Turkey and me in England, we see some stars down in the south of the world, the stars they see at night are different, different stars to what we have. And I found that amazing to look up and see stars that I didn't know. Uh, I kept on bicycling all the way, ba -ba -da -da -da -da -da until eventually I made it to South Africa, the bottom of Africa. Um, and that took me just over one year to do on the bicycle. So one year of riding from my house to the end of Africa. And then I had to get across the ocean. Who needs an iPad? Look, this is better than an iPad. So I crossed over the Atlantic Ocean on a, a sailing boat. I wanted to try and go around the whole world without using an aeroplane. So my plan was when I got to the ocean to cross the oceans by boat, not by aeroplane. So I, it took three weeks, 21 days to cross the Atlantic Ocean over to South America. And then I, am I is this okay, by the way, should I keep going? Is it all right? Uh, yeah, but there yeah. are some uh, students that raised hands. Quanch, uh, uh, Doa. Okay. Would you like to pause for their questions? Yeah. Do you do you guys have any questions? Hi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My one question. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, Bushra, who would like choose? to go for Yanka? Yanka, you can ask him. Uh, why did you write this book? <laughs> why? Um, I wrote the book because, first of all, I wrote a, a book for adults about cycling around the world. But um, I spent a lot of time going to schools and giving talks to children all around the world about my adventures. And... When I was doing those talks, I realized that children were really interested in different places in the world, different cultures, 
And so I wanted to try and turn my stories into a book for children. So I hoped that it would be a book that would help children learn about different countries and different cultures and to see that the world is actually a, a friendly and kind and good place to go and have adventures in. So that's one reason I wrote it. I also wrote it because writing books is my job, so I needed to get some money. <laughs> also, Yankee, can I just say, you've got a world map on the wall. That's a good sign for an adventurer, so that's good to see. Thanks. <laughs> okay, Doa, uh, do you have questions? Uh, first, uh, I love this uh, book, and uh, I can say, uh, there are good places to visit. Okay, my favorite place is to visit. Um, oh, it's really hard to choose because I went to 60 different countries and every country is really interesting for different reasons. But I really enjoyed, in Africa, I really liked Sudan, um, crossing the desert there. That was one of my favorites. Um, I think uh, South Africa was a really, really beautiful country. Um, in South America, I think Colombia was my favorite place. Uh, people had told me that it was a really dangerous country, so I was quite afraid to go to Colombia, but then I had such a good time there. And then I also really enjoyed Japan. Um, Japan is such an interesting place. It's very, very different to every other country. Um, it's a very safe country um, and the food also is very good. I like food. Oh, actually, look, I've got a, a mug of Japanese food. Sushi, sushi mug. So, yeah, I like, but I like nearly, you know, I loved, I honestly loved cycling through Turkey as well. Thank you, Da. And Kwanj, do you have any question? Yes. You can go on. In, why bike? <laughs> why, not, why bike? <laughs> why not plane or why not car? Why bike? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, there are two answers. Answer one is that plane or car is expensive. And I was a young man and I didn't have very much money. So traveling by a bicycle is a very cheap way to go on adventures. So that's one answer. The other reason I went by bike is that um, traveling by plane is so fast. You get on the plane and you are on the other side of the world. But traveling by bike is really slow. And going slow means that you get to see everywhere. You, get, you can stop and talk to people um, and you have a much more interesting experience on bike. I still think after I've been on many different journeys, I still think that traveling by bike is the best way to see a country properly. Thank you, Kwanj. Uh, Ada, do you have any questions? Yes. Why didn't you get a health kit? Health kit? Um, I did have, I did take quite a small health kit with me. I did. So before, and before I started, I had lots of uh, injections for uh, diseases in different countries. Um, when I was in Africa, I took uh, pills for malaria. Um, and so I was trying to be take care of my health. But, but also when you're on a bike, you have to carry everything yourself. So you don't want anything that's heavy. So I had to just take a health kit, which was just the most important things. Um, not too heavy, but also hopefully enough to keep me safe. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Adam, for your question. And Atahan, do you have any questions? Yes. Ben kitabın devamı gelecek mi diye soracaktım yani. Uh, okay, uh, he is asking that if you are going to write more books about, about children. Uh, yes, I hope so. So the, um, this one, there are three books like mm -hmm. this. I think, is there just one in Turkish at the moment? Yes, yeah, there? at the moment, yeah. Okay, so there are three books like this that I've already written. Mm -hmm. And then I've written another book, a children's book, 
which is the, this one, which has got lots of, it's more um, pictures of, of different adventures. Mm -hmm. um, so I think something that's really important um, is to have heroes, heroes, people that you think, wow, their story is amazing. And I'd like to live my life like these people. So when I was a boy, I had lots of heroes who were adventurous, people who'd gone on big journeys. And so this is the book about my adventure heroes. Um, and um, I'm also, I, cr I once I crossed the Atlantic Ocean in a, in a rowing boat, so uh, rowing across the ocean. I, I'm writing a book for children about that adventure as well at the moment. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your question, Adan. Uh, again? No, thanks. I guess, Ruju, do you have any questions? Um, yes, I have uh, some questions. I wonder why this kid was going to South Africa, you know? The book is really good, but why he was going to there? Why he didn't go to, for example, to India, for example? Why he didn't go to another places, another countries? Why wow. South Africa? Okay, that's a very, very good question. So, uh, in, the in the world, there are, I wanted to go all the way around the world. So I could, I could have gone just like around, around like that, but I wanted to go a bit further than that. And if you look on the world, there are three really big pieces of land. So there's Europe and Africa is one, and then South America and North America, is one and then all the way across Asia is another big piece of land so I wanted to cross all of those three um, and that's what I did but this book is just the first part of going around the world so it's just from England to Africa and then the second book is South America and North America and the third book is across Asia that's the reason good question uh, thank you again for your question. Uh, Yeet, Ali Jan, do you have any questions? Okay, Daphne? Okay, Yeet. Uh, why? Okay. Hocam, neden peki işte yani bir küçücük bir çocuk. Neden? Uh, okay, I'm asking. Uh, he's asking why uh, is is the little boy not a grown man or something? Not uh, why is the little boy? Okay, <laughs> that that's a good question. Um, so, I the story in the book is a true story. All of the things in the book really happened to me, but. I was a grown man, I was an adult when I did the trip. So I have written a book about me as an adult going around the world, but I thought when I turned my story into a book for children, I thought that if I made the person in the book a boy, then you guys might find it more interesting and you might be able to think, ah, this person is a bit like me. And then maybe you would have ideas to do your own adventures. Does that make sense? Yeet, tamam mıdır? Sorunun cevabını alabildiysen. Yes, it's okay. Tamam. Teşekkür ederiz. Thank you. Ben sorabilir miyim? Tabii. Şey soracağım ben. Yazar olmaya ne zaman, ne hangi yıl ve neden başladınız? Neden başladın? Okay, uh, he Utku is asking that why did you start start writing and when? Ah, good question. Um, I started writing because I love reading. Reading books is one of my favorite things to do. I've got lot. I've I have lots of books. These books are all books I read about travel and adventure and reading books made me want to go and have adventures. So reading books made me become a writer. So 
I love reading books. And then I thought, if I like reading them, maybe I can try to write a book. And I, I wanted to write a book because I, I enjoy writing. I enjoy trying to tell stories to young people. Um, but I also thought that I would really love to make writing my job. If I could get paid to write books, then I would feel like the luckiest man in the world to be able to sit at home, drinking coffee, writing a book just feels to me like a really nice way to spend a day and not a boring job. So that's, they're, they're the two reasons why I wanted to do it. And I started writing, um, when I started my bicycle ride around the world, I started a blog. So I would send blog um, stories on my website around the world. And those stories on my website gradually became the book in the end. Thank you, Utsuko, for your question. Um, F.A. would like to ask that, uh, what was your inspiration while writing this book? Ooh. Um, I think my inspiration was other books that I've read. So stories about traveling around the world that I've read and I've thought, oh, I love that book. I would like to try to do something like that. So, so that's one inspiration. And then the other was, while I cycled around the world, I went to about 300 different schools. I visited school children all around the world. So talking to kids, answering questions, uh, they, they helped me get the inspiration for writing the book as well. Thank you. Uh, Daphne, do you have any questions? Uh, yes. Usually, do you like to write books for children or adults? Oh, that's a good question. Do I like to write books for children or for adults? Um, I like to write both. I like they're, they're different things to do. Um, so I like to do both of them, really. Uh, this book, this, this is my, the book I've done for children recently with lots of pictures. And because I'm very lazy, I thought that this would be a really easy book to write because... It has many pictures and not very many words. And somebody else, the artist, did the paintings, not me. So I thought this would be really easy and really quick. But actually, a book like this was so much work. I found this book so hard to write that I was, it was driving me crazy. So I think in writing a book for adults is easier than writing a book like this. Um, but I like doing them both for different reasons. Thank you, Daphne. And Nargis, uh, so do you have any questions? Okay. And Eylül would like to ask that, what was the most interesting in your journey? <laughs> Ooh, oh. that is a hard question. Um, Maybe I have to I have to choose something difficult because I was riding my bike for four years. So imagine if I say to you, what was the most interesting thing in the last four years? It's a it's a hard question, uh, but I will choose cycling through Russia. When I was in Russia. Over here, I was here in the winter time in the winter and it was really cold. It was minus 40 degrees there minus 40 degrees so which is much colder than a freezer if you think about a freezer in your house where you keep ice cream it's much colder than that so imagine living inside a freezer for three months that was really really hard and something that was interesting there is that sometimes the bridges had fallen down in that part of the world so we had to wait until the rivers turned to ice and only when the rivers were ice then you could cycle along the rivers and use the rivers like the roads. Um, so it has to be very cold before you can do that. So I'll choose that. Thank you. And Uzum, do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, I, uh, did you saw uh, really uh, elephant family in Kenya? Mm -hmm. Did I see elephants? Was that the question? Yeah. Elephants. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I saw elephants when I was cycling through um, Africa in Kenya and Tanzania. I saw elephants and one night I was, I was sleeping. I put up my tent and I was just camping and I sat outside my tent to eat my food and some, uh, some elephants walked past me, which was half very exciting and half very scary. But that was, that was a really beautiful thing. And actually seeing different animals in different countries was one of the best parts of the journey. So when, when I crossed the uh, ocean by boat, we saw dolphins jumping and we saw whales in the water. Um, when I was in um, Canada, there were lots of bears, grizzly bears and black bears, which was beautiful, but also quite scary. Um, so yeah, I think, Seeing different animals is a really nice part of traveling. Thank you. Uh, and Ajay, do you have any questions? Yes. How long did it take to write this book? Um, good question. I try to write one book every year. That's that's my plan I try to do that but actually this this book well when when you are a writer it's really hard to, to write a book you have to sit there and you have to write a lot but what's also really hard is finding a company who will publish the book so when you finish writing your book you send it to lots of different people saying do you like my book do you like my book and nearly everybody says no no no no no so it took me about five years to find someone to publish this book. So it's about one year of writing, but quite a long time to find anyone who would publish it. But like now I have a publisher, so it's about one book every year, just about. Thank you. And Nargisu would like to ask, uh, what has this experience changed in your life? It's hard to travel the world and you've been to five continents. This is a fantastic thing. Wow, that's a good question. I think the best thing about going to five continents and 60 countries is to see different people in different parts of the world just living their normal life. Because when you watch the TV, you only see the crazy and usually the bad things that are ha happening in different parts of the world. And sometimes when you watch the news on TV, it seems like the world is a very dangerous, evil, frightening place. So the best thing about my journey around the world was to visit so many different cultures and countries and religions and to find everywhere I went that the world was full of good, kind, ordinary people just like we are. And that I felt very safe and very welcome everywhere in the world. So I think that is definitely the best part of the whole experience. Thank you. Uh, Gökçe, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, did you travel continue to uh, travel before the coronavirus? Um, yes. Yeah, so, the, so the story you'd read happened long before coronavirus so um yeah th this year in england we are also in lockdown nothing is happening this year so f for somebody who loves to travel it's very boring but uh i hope that soon it will all be over and we can all have get our lives back again i hope thank you thank you uh, Marit has a question. Uh, he's asking that, what was your family's first thought when you said that you want to go around the world al alone with a bike? <laughs> um, I think at first they didn't believe me. They, they thought that was a crazy idea. And then second, they started to get worried and to be afraid because like I said a few minutes ago, if you see on TV, it seems like the world is a really dangerous place. So my family were quite afraid for me uh, um, before I went. Um, and also the third thing was they thought that I should be getting a proper job, that 
I had finished university and I was supposed to be a teacher and to do a good, proper job, not to do something stupid like a crazy adventure. But they were very good. They let me follow my dreams and go and have the adventure. So I'm very grateful to my parents for allowing me to go and follow my dreams. And there are so many questions, but I think we have uh, not so much time. So uh, it, it's it's sorry, Bushra, it's okay. I've got about 20 minutes. Oh, okay, okay, nice then. Um, I thought you had to leave. Yeah, I have to get soon. So my children. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have two children, a boy called Tom mm -hmm. and a girl called Lucy, and they are the children in this book. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. For them, they are the lockdown. They have gone back to school now, so I have to go and pick them up from school soon. Son, bir şey sorabilir miyim kan? Uh, okay, uh, we have twenty minutes more, so you all, all of you uh, can ask your questions. Okay, Utku, you can ask. Şey, ben aklımda kalır. Tom o yaştayken nasıl öyle yolculuklara çıkabildi? Ya okul var okul falan. He is asking how uh, Tom went to those trips while he has a uh, school and so young. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the stories in the book are true. The stories happened to me, but I was 25 years old. So for it to be a young boy doing this was me using my imagination. Because uh, if you remember at the start of the book, Tom is sitting in his school, uh, not listening to his teacher and daydreaming and daydreaming. So I like to think that the book was a bit of a daydream because you do have to be a bit older to cycle around the world. But I also hope though, that having a young boy in the book will make you think that maybe you can start to do some adventures of your own, not, not around the world yet, but near to where you live to explore new places around where you live and to start having adventures now. Okay, Yeet have uh, have a question. You can ask. When you was a child, which work do you want to do? Uh, as a child. Uh, okay. uh, well, f first of all, I wanted to be a professional football player, mm -hmm. but I was very bad at football. So then I wanted to be a teacher to teach in schools. Um, I also I thought I would like to write books but i didn't really know if that would be a possible i thought maybe it was too hard so uh, my plan was to be a teacher okay uh, Eril. my question is um did anything dangerous happen to you during this journey did anything dangerous um well, I think I think if you cycled on your bicycle around anywhere for four years, around Ankara or around Turkey or around London or around the world, in four years, maybe some bad things might happen anywhere. So I, I was worried that there would be many bad things in different parts of the world. But really, I had so few bad things situations i had for every one bad thing i had maybe a hundred good kind experiences so it really wasn't a a dangerous experience i did have some bad things happen like i got sick i was sometimes really sick which is difficult when you're on your own i had many bad things happen to my bike my bike completely broke many times uh, and i had to try to repair it i had three different bicycles on the journey but actually there were much more good things than bad things in the trip did you saw a scorpion <laughs> yes i did see i did see lots of scorpions actually um yeah in some of the hot places in the world and you have to remember to shake out your shoe uh, in the morning just to make sure there's no scorpion sleeping inside it and when i got to beijing to china there i found uh, scorpions for eating bar barbecued scorpions on a stick you have a, a long stick like this with a nice juicy scorpion on top to eat i think i prefer turkish food mm -hmm. um, i have one question Can I... 
Okay, you can go. Did you really travel the world on a bike or is it just something in the book because it's not possible? <laughs> well, maybe maybe uh, later you can look on my website and there are and uh, I have lots of photographs of me on a bicycle to show you that I actually did do it. But um, yeah, it is possible to do. You know, if you can cycle 10 kilometers in the morning, you can cycle 10 kilometers in the afternoon and the next day you will be a bit stronger and you can go a bit further. So it is true. I promise you it's true. I really did cycle around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask? Yes. You can ask. Uh, I will ask about, uh, did you travel the own countries? Yeah. No, I didn't. So now I've been traveling for years since the bicycle. I've been to nearly 100 countries in the world, but there are 200 countries in the world, which means even after all this time, I'm not even halfway to seeing the whole world. There are so many places in the world and I haven't even been to half of them. So I have, you can travel for your whole life and you'll not see the whole world. I say have a question. I say you can go. Uh, she is asking how did your family let you do that? <laughs> um, my, my parents, they taught me that I should really work hard, but they also taught me that it was my life and I should choose to have my dreams in life and try to make my dreams come true. So even though I think my mother was a bit not happy about me leaving, she knew that this was really important to me and she had to trust me that I would do the right thing. So. I think that's a hard thing of being a parent is you have to look after your children, but you also have to let them go as well at some point. So you have I'm the best thankful parents for my ever. parents. Yeah, I am lucky. I have, I have good but, parents. Yeah, I should repeat that in the book, uh, Tom is a little boy, but in the reality, uh, Alistair did the travel when he was 25 years oh, old. Yeah. So he yes. was not that little. It's more fiction. <laughs> Can I say? Can I take? Yes. Who? Who? Who? Who? Who? Who? Who? Who? Who? Who? Who? Where did you sleep at night? I slept in a tent. So I would cycle till I was somewhere really quiet where there were no houses, no people around, and then I would take my tent and I would go and sleep in the trees or behind a hill, somewhere where nobody could see me, so I'd be nice and safe and be in peace, and yeah, I would sleep in my tent. Then in the morning I'd pack up my tent, put it on the bike, and cycle away again. So sleeping in a tent is good fun, it's beautiful, and also it doesn't cost any money, so it's good for adventures. Uh, in fact, raising her hand, yeah. What was your favorite of the food you eat while traveling? Traveling. Oh, favorite food. Oof. Oh, that's a difficult question because on a bicycle you get very greedy, so you like mm -hmm. to eat lots of food. Um, but I loved all of the food in all of the countries, say from uh, Istanbul, Syria, Lebanon. I loved all of this sort this. The, this part of the world was really delicious. Um, I loved the food in um, Georgia. That was very nice. Um, Ethiopia in Africa has really nice spicy food that you, uh, you eat, eat with your hands. It was very good. Um, and then I also liked the food in Japan, the, the sushi in Japan. I really liked. Um, Ariel, Ariel uh, wants to ask. I need to be honest, uh, I don't like sushi though. <laughs> well, sometimes, so sushi I think is either delicious or no. disgusting. 
And the problem is you don't, you, you don't know until you put it in your mouth and bite. And then it's sometimes delicious, sometimes disgusting. It's an adventure. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe you are right. <laughs> Uh, okay, Edil. My question is, uh, did you really eat banana sandwiches in your journey? <laughs> I, I did eat banana sandwiches, but maybe not as many as Tom eats in the book. Tom <laughs> eats a lot of banana sandwiches, but I did eat quite a lot of banana sandwiches um, because they are cheap. They don't cost much money. Uh, they've got very good energy for bicycling. Um, so yeah, I did. I did eat quite a lot. But Tom in the book, he really likes banana sandwiches. Me, not maybe that much. You should try one. Mm -hmm. uh, Mart's asking that: Have you really went someone's ho a home to stay at night? Yes, yes, quite quite often when I was cycling around the world, families would invite me to to stay in their homes. Um, Sometimes it was arranged. So I, if I was going to give a talk in a town, maybe the teacher would invite me to stay at their house before I visited the school. But quite often it would be just a surprise. I would be cycling somewhere and I would start talking to some people and they were really nice and kind. And then they would invite me to their house for food or to spend the night. And that I think was my favorite part of the journey was just staying with different families in different parts of the world. It's really a wonderful thing to do. And he is asking if you are still traveling or do you have plans to travel after the COVID? Uh, so these days I mostly travel in my own country. So trying to find small adventures close to home in my own country. And that's what I've been writing books about more recently is local short adventures so i still love traveling i still love adventures but these days i can't go and cycle around the world for four years because i now have two children of my own who i have to look after so actually that's what i have to do when i finish talking to you is i have to go to the school and collect tom from school uh, my boy is called tom and you lucy my daughter so, uh, and isn't the one is ee, şöyle, e, şu an zaten korona olduğu için e, İngiltere'de ülkesinde küçük küçük böyle maceralara çıkıyormuş ama artık iki de çocuğu olduğu için eskisi gibi maceralar yaşamıyormuş. E, daha çok e, İngiltere'de daha kısa süreli e, yolculuklara çıkıyormuş. Thank you. And Efe would like to ask uh, what kind of games would you play as a computer game? Ooh, well... <gülüyor> Um, my son Tom, he has a, a Nintendo Switch, so which he loves. So my favorite game with him on that is uh, Mario. I like playing Mario, and I like playing FIFA, the football game as well. Thank you, uh, Poiras. Uh, what was the moment that you scared most when you were traveling around the world? But the moment, can you say that again? That you scared most. Uh, the, the moment when I was the most scared was day one, the beginning, when I was standing outside my house and I had to say goodbye to my family and say to everybody, goodbye, I'm going to try to cycle around the world, see you in four years, and mm -hmm. to pedal away from home and begin that was the most frightening part of the journey. Were your plans for four years or it went by fine? So I, I, I did not know how long it would take. My guess, when I started, I was said to my friends, uh, goodbye, I will be gone between three years and 10 years. I wasn't sure, three years to 10 years, somewhere in that was, I didn't really know how long it would take to get around the world. Uh, Ira. Uh, anlatmakta en sevdiği yer neredeymiş yani bize anlatırken yazarken? Uh, in the book, uh, where were the best place uh, to write and uh, talk about? Um, 
I like to write and talk about countries that we don't usually hear very many things about, uh, countries that are maybe not that famous or don't have many visitors. So I really liked writing about Sudan and Ethiopia in Africa because they're, they're not usually in most books for children. Uh, okay, last two Thank questions, you. Um, and then we... Uh, well, then, yeah. uh, Daphne, I see Daphne is very keen to ask a question. Okay, Daphne, you can go. <laughs> um, where you like uh, most where you go? Ooh, where did I like the most? Mm -hmm. <sighs> you know, I get asked this question many times, and every time i think i give a different answer because there are so, there are so many places that I really like so for example now i'm talking to all of you i'm having many really happy memories of visiting turkey so it's really i really enjoyed being in turkey but if i had to choose one place whoa, where did i enjoy i think i really enjoyed the countries like kyrgyzstan Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, th this part of the world, because I didn't know anything about that part of the world, but I really loved it. So I'll choose that part of the world, Central Asia. You said Georgia at the first question. Okay, Nefes, uh, you can ask. Kendi kitapları dışında en sevdiği kitap ne? Onu sor. Uh, which which one is your bet? Um, which which is your favorite book besides yours? <laughs> um, my favorite book besides mine. So, uh, that's a very good question. I really like a book called. Oh my goodness! This is so hard. This is the hardest question ever. Uh, I like a book by. You'll have to look him up on Google later, an explorer called Ernest Shackleton. And he tried to go to the South Pole about a hundred years ago and everything went completely wrong. He had so many disasters. It's a crazy disaster story, um, but quite amazing. So I'll choose the book by Ernest Shackleton. Maybe you can uh, Google him later. Can I ask a question? Uh, okay. The last question, because he needs to pick uh, his children from school. <laughs> what is your favorite writer? Ooh, Who is your that, favorite writer? That's a very good question. My favorite writer is an American writer called Ernest Hemingway. And uh, he's, he's my favorite writer of books. He writes not travel books, he writes uh, novels, stories, but he's my favorite writer. Um, guys, we need to finish because there are so many coming questions and it's going to be long. Uh, but if you have any questions, you can mail me and ask him uh, later if you like and if it's okay. Uh, yeah, I think... Sorry, sorry, keep... Yeah, yeah, no, you can go. Okay. Um, yeah, if, I'm sorry if I d didn't have time to answer the question that you have, or maybe if you didn't want to ask a question on Zoom. So if you do have any questions about the book or travel, then write them down in your best English and uh, send them through and I will answer the, all the questions for everybody. I'll do that later. Um, so thank you so much for all coming here today. It's really nice to see so many of you in uh, in Anchorage. I've really enjoyed it. And thank you very much for reading my book. Teshikur Ederim. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was lovely. Okay. Thank you very much. You. And now I now I have to stop being a writer and go and be dad and pick up Tom and Lucy from school. So thank, thank you very you. much. I'll say thank goodbye. You. Bye. Bye. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye.